What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel where I talk about business and marketing and personal development, other stuff like that that's not really a fit for my main channel. In today's video, what I wanna talk about is how to get paid to do what you love. So if you're like a creative of any kind, if you make videos or you're a graphic designer, photographer, anything like that, and you're at the stage where you go, you know, I think I'm pretty good at what I do, but how do I get more clients? Then I'm gonna tell you how to do that in this video. This is how I ended up working with like a Data Remember and Periphery and Self Help Fest and Intervals and you know, pretty much all the clients that I've worked with over the past couple years. And I don't really do that stuff anymore because I really just wanna focus on my own stuff. I wanna just focus on YouTube and my main job, URM Academy. So a lot of people think that the answer to, to kind of getting your career off the ground as a creative freelancer is social media and that is not true like nobody gives a shit how many social media followers you have what they met what they care about is if I hire you are you gonna help me be more successful like if I hire Finn is he gonna help me make more money and then what's gonna happen is they're gonna and, and if you hit a home run for them then they're gonna introduce you to their friends because someone's gonna ask them hey do you know anybody that does X like do you know anyone that does you know, uh, do you know anyone that does Facebook ads? Do you know anybody that does graphic design? And they'll go, yeah, I know this guy or girl, she did an awesome job for me last time, I'll introduce you guys. Word of mouth and referral are the way that this works. It's not like, think about it this way. Have you ever heard of anybody like hiring a videographer or graphic designer because they saw a Facebook ad? Like it doesn't really work that way. Like the way that creative industries work is word of mouth. So what you wanna do is find that one breakthrough client. And for me, that breakthrough client was Periphery. The way that I ended up getting to know those guys was at my previous job uh, back in 2014, I think. Uh, I worked for a company called Creative Live that's like online education for uh, creative people. So like photographers and graphic designers, stuff like that. Um, and what I was doing at the time, so when I, when I started at Creative Live, they were basically only doing photography and business stuff. When I started there, they said, hey, should we do some stuff? Should we do music production courses? And I said, yeah, I can help with that because you know I know people in the music industry. I know some producers. And so I started that kind of department within Creative Live, like the, the music production department. And I got introduced to Matt from Periphery through a mutual friend, Bill, over at TuneTrack. TuneTrack makes a piece of software called Easy Drummer and Superior Drummer. So if you hear about people programming drums, uh, they're probably using one of those two products. There's lots of other good ones, but those are the most popular ones. Bill knows absolutely everybody in the music business because of his job. And he introduced me to Matt Halpern from Periphery. Matt and I did a course at Creative Live called the Working Musician Playbook, where we helped people understand how to make a living as a professional musician because Matt has done an amazing job of that. I mean, he's one of the smartest, most like business savvy people you're gonna meet in the music industry. And that course kind of showed people how to do it. Like if, you know, if you're a drummer or a guitarist or whatever, how do you actually make a living at that? So we did that, uh, that was our first project together and it went really well, uh, I was like, I mean, I knew it was gonna. <laughs> I knew I was gonna enjoy working with him because he actually replied to my emails, which, believe it or not, most musicians don't do. Uh, but anyway, so from there, the next thing that Matt and I did, uh, he introduced me to Kevin Lyman, the founder of Warp Tour, and with Kevin, I did a class called um, the New Music Industry. I think kind of a similar thing of like, how do you make a living in the new music industry where you know labels and record sales and all that stuff are turned upside down. And after those two things were, so Kevin and Matt were working together on a project at the time called Band Happy, so that's sort of how they were connected. I did, so after those two things were successful, uh, Matt and I said, hey, why don't we do a class about music production with Nolly from Periphery? Because Nolly at the time was producing a lot of their, well, I mean, Nolly, Nolly was in the band at the time, he isn't anymore, um, but he's been recording and producing their last couple albums. So, and, and he was trying to get his name out there. Obviously, a ton of people in the music production world, if you, you know, if you know anything about music production, you know that everybody in that world loves Periphery and they wanna know how they work their magic. So we said, let's make a class where we show them how we recorded and mixed Periphery 2, which was, I think, new at the time. 
So we did that and it was just a smash hit. Like everybody loved it. It was a great experience, made a ton of money for everybody. And then, uh, you know, Matt and I were like, man, we really like working together. This is cool. We should do more stuff together. So a little bit after that, the guys in Periphery, Matt and Nolly and Misha, along with uh, our other friend Des from Good Tiger, started a company called Get Good Drums, making their own drum software, kind of along the lines of uh, the stuff TuneTrack makes. Um, basically, it's drum samples played by Matt and recorded by Nolly. So if you want to get Periphery sounds in your mixes, here you go. Uh, buy this thing, this drum library for you know 90 bucks, and you've got it. So they had this product ready to go but they weren't sure how to how to sell it how to market it so they called me and said hey we want to we've got this thing ready to go but we just realized you know we don't really have a strong go to market plan can you help us with actually getting this thing out into the market and selling it cuz you know that's the hard part for a lot of people right like having a great product is one thing but can you actually get people to buy it <laughs> that's the hard part for a lot of people so uh, to make a long story short uh, I said yes, and we put together a little plan. We implemented it, and everybody made a bunch of money. Like, we blew away their sales forecast. You know, they wanted to make X dollars in three months, and we nailed that, no problem. And we're like, shit, I guess this is, this is a good team. We should keep doing stuff together. So from there, uh, I ended up working with Get Good Drums for a couple years, but uh, sort of the, the next domino to fall in this chain is Matt said, well, we've got some stuff coming up for Periphery. I don't remember if it was an album or a tour or new merch, or I don't remember what it was that they wanted help with, but we've got some stuff for Periphery coming up. Could you help us with that? And so then they introduced me to their manager, uh, this guy over at a company called Fly South. Fly South manages uh, Paramore and a Data Remember and Falling in Reverse and Issues and a, a bunch of other kind of big bands in the Warp Tour sort of world. Uh, and so I did the same thing for Periphery. It worked for Periphery, and then Wayne at Fly South was like, well, shit, that was pretty cool. Could you do that for a day to remember? And I said, yes, absolutely. And it worked for them. Could you do that for Issues? And I did it for Issues. Could you help us promote the next self-help fest? So I did. So, and, and, and then I got introduced to uh, Aaron from uh, Intervals. I don't remember from who. I don't remember who introduced us, but Somehow or another, word got out that, hey, if you hire Finn to do your Facebook marketing, you're gonna sell a bunch of shit. So uh, I was introduced to Aaron and I helped him promote whatever, uh, it was his, um, the album that came out like two years ago with like the pink one on the cover, I forget the name of it. Helped him promote that album launch and some tours around it. I still pr help promote him. Uh, he's like the only musician that I still do freelance work for just cause we're friends and I like to help him out. Um, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that that's how this is going to work. If you are wondering, you know, my point, what I'm trying to illustrate here is like that you want to find that one domino. And once you knock over that domino, then all the other ones fall down. And that domino is going to be that breakthrough client where if you do a good job for them, they're going, to, they're going to introduce you to people who will introduce you to people who are introduce you to other people. And then suddenly you find yourself like at one point I had more clients than I knew what to do with. Like I literally just didn't have enough time in the day to take on more clients. And I had to say no to new clients, which is a great problem to have. Right? Like I wanted, you know, could, could you do this for our band? And I was like, shit, I would love to, but honestly, I just don't have enough time in the day. Like what a great problem to have, right? So if you want to get there, what you need to look for is that first breakthrough client, find somebody where you can do a great job for them. And if you do that, if you nail it for them, how will that, what are the other doors that that will open for you? And I would say like, be open to the idea of doing that work for free because the value of opening up your network like that is way higher than whatever amount of money that you would get paid for that work. So let's say, um, let's say you're a wedding photographer, a wedding videographer, and somebody you know who is like really well networked, like an important cool person like in your city is getting married. Uh, and, and, and this is your opportunity, like maybe they, maybe they don't have a lot of money. Maybe they're a cool, well-connected person, but they don't have a lot of money. They're looking for a wedding photographer potentially do that job for free. Because if this person is super well connected, like let's say they own a cool bar or something like that. If you do a great job for that person, 
now he or she is going to introduce you to all their friends who also need a wedding photographer and those people will pay you. So if you take like the long game, you'll understand that the amount of money you'll make in the future by doing this job for free is way higher than the amount of money and more important than the amount of money you would make in the short term by getting paid for this project. So. The reason I mention this is because I think a lot of people are emotional about doing free work. Like they get all up in arms and say you should never do free work. I've done a lot of free work in my career and it helped me out a lot. So, you know, be deliberate about it. Don't let people take advantage of you. But at the same time, don't shoot yourself in the foot by saying no to a free project that could potentially open the door to like the whole rest of your career, right? So there you go. The takeaway here again is look for that first big breakthrough client, that first domino that's going to knock down all the other domino dominoes. And that is how you're going to build up your client roster and end up getting paid to do what you love. So hopefully that helped and I will see you next time.